Anyone remember this stuff? If you're like me, most of your payments these days are made using the tap of a credit card. With such an easy way to access funds, it's no surprise the average American has over $6,000 of credit card debt. The Federal Reserve estimated the nation's credit card debt rose to over $1.1 trillion in the final quarter of 2023. At an average interest rate of 22%, this is a growing issue for many people not only in America, but around the world. Credit cards can be useful, but only if they're used responsibly. In this video, I'll be sharing five of the best ways to pay down credit card debt. If you're new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe down below to see more content just like this. The first tip is to pay off the highest interest debt first. Carrying debt is a pain, especially when there's exorbitant interest costs for doing so. As I mentioned before, the Federal Reserve reported an average interest rate of 22.75% in the United States. This cost is substantially higher than an equivalent mortgage or car loan. If a credit card balance remains unpaid, through the power of compounding, a $1,000 balance would almost double after just three years. If you have multiple credit card debts outstanding, the fastest way to pay them off is to start with the balance with the highest interest rate. Simply write all of your credit card balances on a piece of paper, sorted by the highest interest rate debt to the lowest and start knocking off the highest interest rate debt first. As you work your way down the list, more of your repayments will be going towards the loan balance, eliminating the debt faster. Financial advisors call this the avalanche method, and it is one of the most tried and true methods for eliminating debt fast. The second tip is to pay off the smaller balances first. If you have more than one card, a common approach is to pay the smaller balances first and work your way up. This is called the snowball method of debt repayments, and the theory is that zeroing out a credit card balance provides a sense of accomplishment. Seeing small improvements in the right direction can create momentum to knock off the larger balances later. Many financial advisors prefer the avalanche method we covered in tip one. But at the end of the day, the most important thing when it comes to paying down credit card debt is finding a plan that works for you. If paying off a credit card with a smaller balance in full motivates you to keep on track, then obviously it's the right option for you. The third tip is to consolidate your credit card debt. A great way to reduce the interest rate you pay on your existing credit card debt is to consolidate it using either a personal loan or a balance transfer card. This method involves moving your credit card debts onto a single debt, which incurs a much lower interest rate. Banks typically offer these products at a lower interest rate than what is typically offered on credit cards. For example, here is ASB Bank's website here in New Zealand. Their standard credit cards charge rates of 20 and 21%. On the left-hand side of the screen is the Visa Lite card, and if we click in there, they offer a 0% rate on transferred balances from other banks' credit cards. They give you six months to fully repay the debt. Another option they offer is a personal loan at a rate of just 13.9%. Their credit cards, on the other hand, offered rates of 20 and 21%. Even here on the website, they suggest using this to consolidate your debt at a lower interest rate. This can save you literally hundreds of dollars in interest costs. Don't believe me? Let's put it to the test. If you had a $6,000 credit card balance at an interest rate of 20%, charged monthly. After three years of repayments, you'd be charged a little over $8,000, with $2,000 charged as interest. By consolidating your debt on a personal loan and making the same repayments, you'd repay the debt three months faster and save a whopping $800 in interest. And of course, if you were able to repay $1,000 a month on the balance transfer credit card, you'd save the full $2,000 in interest. So consolidating debt can be a very powerful tool as long as the new loans aren't used for new spending. The fourth tip is to think of your credit card debt in chunks. The thought of paying off credit card debt can be daunting, especially if you have a large balance to repay. This can lead many people to avoid making repayments altogether. Thankfully, we can often chunk down these bigger tasks into smaller, bite-sized ones. As we work our way through the small chunks, we can build momentum by knocking off debt as micro wins. For example, imagine you have a $10,000 credit card balance. Instead of trying to tackle $10,000 of debt as a whole, imagine it as 10 sets of $1,000. This is much more manageable 
And though it won't make debt repayment quicker, it will encourage you to start eliminating these manageable chunks, where the larger balance previously turned you off from starting repayments at all. Now we're up to the fifth tip, which is to prioritize paying down the credit card debt. Often, this will mean spending less in other areas and redirecting those funds into card payments. Start by categorizing your weekly spending into large buckets, such as groceries, transport, housing, that kind of thing. Your card statements can be useful here to identify where your money goes each week. Look for areas that you can cut back spending, and with those savings, put them straight back into the credit card debt. The best tip when it comes to paying down credit card debt is to make the maximum repayments you possibly can. Any additional debt balance you can eliminate can shed months or even years off of your term, saving lots of interest costs. To help spend less, try paying for things with a debit card or even with cash for a while. Paying with money you've already earned can help avoid overspending. And lastly, if you have a financial windfall such as a raise, a bonus or an inheritance, direct this straight into your debt balance. This will significantly help in eliminating stubborn credit card debt. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe down below. I post a lot of content in the personal finance and investing space. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.